Sojourn. Woo! Are you kidding me? How many of y'all, this is your normal, regular church? So this is your first time. Let me see your hands. Nice. We got some first timers in here. Awesome. I hope I don't ruin it for you. <laughs> if you don't like the message, I ain't the head pastor, so you come back when Chris is speaking. <laughs> it is so good to be here. My wife and I moved to Texas uh, and our oldest daughter, and I just so, uh, it, I get to speak all over the country, but I got to tell you, this is the first time I think I'm speaking, and we're in church, so I'm going to preach today with my whole family here. Are you kidding me? And my oldest, uh, Corbin's boyfriend, is here from Oklahoma, Zavin. They normally go to a life church, I think, right? Yeah. So uh, it's an honor to be here with all of you and have my family in the front row. And when I share with you what I feel led to share with you, you'll also then understand how truly miraculous it is that I'm here with my whole family today. For a lot of you, 2020 was a pretty bad year. Can I see a show of hands if 2020 was bad? Is it still bad? Because it's like 2020 just didn't end. It's just, it's been a hard last year and a half, right? And we know this too statistically from the rate of domestic violence, cases that have gone up, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, suicides, suicides among teens. This last year, year and a half, has been a horrible year for a lot of people. And I don't want you to be afraid to say, yes, I'm in that boat. It's been tough. If it's been tough for you, let me see your hand. If it's been tough for you, and for those of you that didn't raise your hand and know you shoulda, it's okay. <laughs> and if you didn't raise your hand because it really wasn't, then God bless you, right? There is a saving grace that God has allowed some of us to walk under that where our jobs weren't affected or impacted. Hundreds of thousands of people around the country right now are deciding on whether or not they want to comply to continue to be able to provide for their family or stand up for their individual liberties. And that's at the end of this year and a half mess that we've been in. So whether you had a hard last year and if it's still hard for you or not, I want to, I want to tell you, I was praying about speaking today. And I get to travel all over the country and speak. I get invited to a lot of political rallies. If you guys know who I am, right, let, me see your, let me see your hand if you know what I do. Yeah, so I get to travel all over the country and I get to speak at political rallies. And it's kind of like Jehovah Sneaky. Because <laughs> I know I'm trying to bring the kingdom every time I go speak. But they may not know that. They, want, they invite me to come speak at these rallies where we'll have three, four, five hundred people at this political event. And I get to talk about Jesus. Amen. I do the political stuff too, right? I'm like, I'll squeeze this in. But then I get to bring the kingdom. I, and I pray for, before every time I speak and I say, Papa, what message do you want me to share at this event? And he's so good. We have such a good father, such a good papa. And I prayed before this, before this Sunday, and I said, God, what message do you want me to share today? And I heard him say, tell them I love them. How many of us get used to hearing something 
Maybe it's a loved one, a spouse, a mother, father. They say, I love you. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we receive it, but sometimes it can really hit you. And when we're talking about God, the creator of the universe wants you to know he loves you. That's powerful. He wants you to know he's with you. For me, it changed my perspective on life and how I operate. When I realized every place I go, the creator of the universe that wants me to know him as Jesus did, Abba, he's with me. How many of you know what Abba means? Jesus said, Abba, Father. Some of us know God as Father. He's the Father. Reverent. We got to revere and fear. But Jesus knew him as Abba, Father. And Abba is the close, intimate form of Father, like we would say, Daddy. Jesus knew the Father as Daddy. So he wants you to know that he's. He's with you. Then I heard him say, he's in you. Does that change your paradigm a little bit? And then finally he said, and tell them I'm about to make all things new in their life. I know that could be different for each and every single one of us, but how many of you would love to say yes to God, the creator of the universe, our papa, our daddy, making things new in our life. Amen? Amen. So when you know where I've come from, it just really makes you go, wow, God, you're good. Because God is so good. I shouldn't even be here today. I literally should not even be alive today. So For those of you that know some of my story, for those that don't, to have been able to champion the greatest president in our generation, Donald J. Trump, to be on his campaign, to travel and speak at events with him, to get retweeted by him, have him share me on his social media. Got to interview him about three weeks ago. Don't hate me now. To know that I've had this amazing journey these last few years, but then to go back a little bit further in time to see what God did to keep me here, it should make every single one of you go, man, God is really good. For me, 2010 was my 2020. A lot of people's 2020 was horrific. A lot of people didn't make it out for a variety of reasons. And a lot of it, a lot of us are still lingering from the trauma, the chaos, the work, crazy work environments. For me, 2010 was my 2020. I had a company that had tanked. I was left alone to my own devices. For me, alcohol is not a good thing. If you can have a glass of wine or two or whatever and be okay, God bless you. But for me, I can't do it. For me, it would always lead to, I got to have another one and another one. And for me, having a history 
in my early days of partying and partying hard, sorry, I might get a little R-rated. There ain't no little kids in here, is there? Oh, there's one right there. I'll keep it PG R-rated. <laughs> For me, when you're at the party, you didn't want to stop. There's things you could do to keep, keep going. So I don't know about you, but when I go through tough times, I don't always just run to Jesus. Am I the only one? I'm sure every single one of you, when it's tough, you just know immediately, Lord, please, line me back up. Unfortunately, some of us have to learn the hard way. And how many understand misery loves company? And so when you're having a miserable time, it sure seems really easy for the enemy to make sure there's somebody else that's miserable right there with you. To blame everything on everybody and everything else except you making stupid decisions. How many understand there's some miserable people that you shouldn't give your ear to? They will drain you and they will keep you in a place that's not healthy. Well, I had that misery loves company friend. I'll call him a misery friend. We were miserable together. And one morning after my wife had left, again, this is amazing, right? You guys saw my wife and daughter stand up. This is 2010. My wife had left. She'd taken the kids because she didn't know what was going on with me, but she knew I wasn't right. The drugs I was doing was keeping me up all night. And then one night, in the wee hours of the morning, I took a hit of this drug, and my eyeballs started going up and down this fast. Like, you can't make your eyeballs go up and down that fast. And in that moment, in that moment, I heard God speak to me and say, don't freak out. Don't freak out. This will pass. This will pass. Because I felt if I looked at my misery friend, I knew he would trip out. And I didn't want to panic. So it lasted about 60 seconds. And then my eyeballs stopped. And I started, they slowly started to gain focus again. In the morning, I called my other misery friend that had introduced me to this drug, and I told him what happened, and he said, David Harris, he said, you need to stop. He said, if you would have panicked, your heart would have exploded. Your body was overdosing. So when I tell you that I shouldn't be here today, I'm telling you, but God. And then to know what he has given me the opportunity to do. Knowing where I came from. Wow. God is so good. A couple weeks after that almost fateful morning, my wife had been praying and she reached out to a friend and he met with me at a Met with me at a uh, local bar, actually, to talk, and he said, he said, it looked like death was on me. How many of you have seen Lord of the Rings? You know the part where the king literally has, like, a spirit of death on him? My friend said, you look just like that. I'm 270 right now. I weighed about a buck 60, 160 pounds back then. So it was a couple weeks after that that after my wife is gone, our kids are gone, my business, people were stealing things out of my business. I was a total train wreck. That I woke up on a Sunday. I'd come to the absolute end of myself. I said, God, what do you want me to do? I threw away all the utensils and all the stuff I'd been using. Threw it all away and I said, God, what do you want me to do? And I heard him say, go to church. How many of you know going to church is a good start? You guys are all in here today. It's a good start. I heard him say, go to church. Now, again, this is in Redding, California. 
when we were going to church, we went to Bethel Church. Anybody here been to Bethel? You know, you, you know how big Bethel is? There's a road that travels all the way to the church, right? In the parking lot, it could fit a couple thousand people there. So when I heard God say go to church, I kind of argued. That's probably where my first are you kidding me came from. <laughs> are you kidding me? You've been to Bethel at 12 o'clock on a Sunday? When I stopped arguing with God, I got in the car, I turned on K Love Radio, and I just started to weep. I felt like the prodigal that had made his bed in the pig trough, eating pig, whatever it is, food. Made an absolute mess of my life. I get to the road that turns, there's one road that only turns and goes up to the church. I get to that road, and the cars are lining the road. That's how packed it is. And it's about a, I don't know, a quarter mile, half mile road. I get all the way to the top of the hill, and I see all the park, I see the parking lot. It's totally full. And then I look to the left, and it says, parking lot full. There's cars everywhere. And I keep driving a little bit, and the very first parking spot was open. It's like... So I park, walk inside, and the lobby area is full. Chairs everywhere. Lobby's full. I walk in the back, full. People everywhere. Totally packed. And I get a tap on my shoulder, and the lady says, are you looking for a seat? You can have mine. I'm third row from the front in the middle on the left. I'm like... gets better I sit down and they just finished worship and finished announcements and the pastor Eric Johnson walks up and he says today I'm going to talk to you about the prodigal son coming home and walking into his inheritance I'm like are you kidding me <laughs> I got prayer multiple times that day I told Pastor Chris Valentin what I was dealing with. He prayed for me. It felt like his hand just went right into my spirit, right into my chest. And I can, I'm excited to tell you I was delivered that day. Never touch those illicit drugs again. But my family was still broken. How many understand when you live a life apart from God and you try to do things your own way, it's not just you that it hurts. You hurt your loved ones. It was about three months later that my bride, Jennifer, had her own little encounter with God and knew that we were supposed to give it another chance. And April 1st of 2011, we got back together. We've been married 27 years now. So again, when I tell you how good God is and what he can do with a life that just says yes, most of you can probably say, well, I ain't as bad as he is. <laughs> right? Am I right? Most of you, it's the little things this or it's little this, that or whatever. But it wasn't the... Life of absolute just darkness that I was living in. So that should encourage every single one of you to know what God can do with a life that just says yes. How many want to say yes today? How many want to say yes? I'm so thankful for our Pastor Terry and Chris and your vision and heart to keep this church open. A lot of churches shut their doors during the Plandemic. Oh, did I say that? Sorry. <laughs> a lot of churches shut their doors. And can I be honest with you? I think the ones that shut their doors and stayed shut didn't need to be open in the first place. <laughs> if it's a church where the leadership is more concerned about you covering your face and staying six feet apart after months and months of now knowing that everybody's got a 99% survival rate. 
It's kind of like the flu. If they're more concerned with that over being there for God's children and giving them a place to gather together and pray, they shouldn't be open in the first place. So I just wanted to say and honor you guys for your decision and your vision to keep this church open. So God reunited and restored. You know when God restores? You know restoration? God's kind of restoration? He restores better than it was before. Restoration isn't back to where it started. Somebody restores an automobile, they make that thing just cherried out like it was better than ever before, right? How many understand God is in the restoration business? How many of you have had family members or friends that have turned their back on you over this last election season? Show hands. You know, friends is one thing, and people that don't know you and want to talk trash is one thing. But when it's your family, that hurts a little bit. I remember when I saw my aunt on my dad's side. So my dad is black. My mom is white of Irish descent. Christmases and Thanksgiving at both those homes were a lot different. <laughs> I have an appreciation for both. But unfortunately, the black side of my family, my dad's family, is predominantly voted for the one party that I don't think any, especially the black community, should vote for. The, voted that, the, the party that votes for ending the lives of unborn babies. That's a crux of the issue for me. If it's off in your moral compass to do any harm to a baby, the amazing worship leader that's up here, she's got five weeks to go before she brings that little life into this world and somebody wants to sit from a political stance, a place of authority and regulating laws and rules and tell you that it's okay to harm that baby, if that's off in their moral compass, what the heck else is off in their moral compass? That's the crux of the issue for me. But in my support for the man that supported life and his policies, the majority of the black community, just of my family, just wrote me off. You guys deal with that? You deal with that? My aunt actually posted, she shared some other pastor, which is, again, probably, hopefully that church shut down and stayed shut. <laughs> but a pastor posted a video of me and some friends of mine that were at a Trump rally, and it was like in between speakers when we were dancing a little bit. And the pastor said, look at them dancing all nice for the massa, talking about us like we're slaves. My aunt reshared that and said, looking all stupid. That hurt a little bit. How many of you have been hurt by family? Some think it's funny that they were hurt by family. <laughs> I guess. That's a good thing, right? Hey, joy of the Lord is our strength. Laughing because we'll have the last laugh. Because how many of those people right now are going, man, we should have voted for the other guy. Goodness <laughs> gracious, what the heck did we do? I truly believe that we are right now in a identity crisis as a country. Who are we? What are we willing to stand up for? What are we willing to, to do? And while I heard what I believe God say to tell you he loves you, it's coming from the creator of the universe, friends. He loves you. He's with you. He's in you. And he wants to make all things new in your life. What I know is that once I got properly aligned with heaven and left the things go to the side that were dragging me down and begin to work on my relationship with my bride and our, our daughters. Again, can I tell you how amazing it is to have them 
even in the same room with me, let alone here to listen to me, and they love me. Whoa. <laughs> God is that good. Um, we need a fresh encounter with the Father's heart. We need a fresh encounter. How many of you in here have a secret place with Papa? Hope, I hope more than, okay. All right, I see a few more hands. How many are like, what the heck is a secret place? <laughs> you saw some hands go up, so you know I'm not crazy. A secret place is a place where you get, it's just you and God. And you pray, or you turn on worship, and you just go after it. And it's, you're just there to, to honor and praise him. You know, we shouldn't always, and I'm sure none of you do, but we shouldn't always go to God with a list, a prayer list. It's kind of silly, actually, if you think about it. God already knows all the things we need. What, what are we going to tell him? Now, I know it says make our petitions known with thanksgiving. So, yes. It is good to do those things. But there is something absolutely beautiful that happens when you get in a place by yourself and turn on worship and your sole intention is just to honor him, just to encounter him, and just to bless him. There's something amazing that happens. And I want to share something that happened with me I've only shared this a handful of times. I've only felt led to share this a handful of times. And I consider it a present, a gift, if you'll receive it. How many of you in here believe there's more of God for you than you've experienced? Show of hands, let me see. And how many want more of God? How many understand that it is going to take God to right the wrong direction this country is facing? It's going to take a miracle. It's going to take miracles. And I believe we are those miracles. I believe that as we open ourselves up to what God is doing and wants to do through our life, we become the catalyst that will send shockwaves of the kingdom into the darkness around us, kicking it out of the way, bringing light in the darkness. That's what it's going to take. There's some days I see what is going on and what this current president on paper is doing, and I'm like, so I want you to play this song, and I'm going to share with you guys an encounter that happened and I want you to just have a heart of yes. I want you to listen. And as you hear what I, what happened to me, grab a hold of it for yourself. Just have a heart of yes. Believe in the, that God has more for you and having a heart that just says yes to that. So I'm gonna explain what happened. And I want you to close your eyes because God is a spirit. And we must worship him in spirit. When I'm in my secret place, I close my eyes. Your love is wild for me. I have worship on. It isn't shy. <laughs> it's and I just seek to get in His presence. Love is proud. I'm so thankful. Sing with me. We are so thankful, God. You're so Can good, God. You're so good, God. <laughs> Remind us all how good you are. All the times you came through for us. That you saved us time and time again. Impress on us the joy that you have in keeping us even when we had no idea you were keeping us, God. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for you. We honor you, God. 
I was in my secret place. I was just thanking him. I was blessing him. You're so good, God. You're so good, God. You're so good, God. You're so good, God. God. And in this moment, with my eyes closed, I saw myself pull myself up on this suspended glass platform that was suspended in the middle of darkness. The only way I could describe it is like in Lord of the Rings when Frodo put the ring on and everything turned dark and misty. That's how it looked. I was standing on this platform in the middle of darkness and I looked out in front of me and it must have been about a hundred yards away I could see the father sitting on his throne and my heart leapt like I was being reunited with my father that I had been separated from a hundred years earlier and I shouted that's my father that's my father I had this heart to heart revelation that he's not just the father. He's not just God the father, but he's my father. And I was shouting, that's my father. I had this amazing revelation of God as my father. And I am his son. And that went on for about five or six minutes. And then I saw Jesus. <laughs> I saw Jesus standing next to him, and it started all over again. It began to erupt in my spirit as I recognized him as my brother. I said, that's my brother. That's my brother. Yeshua, you are my brother. I had this heart-to-heart revelation of not just Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, but he's our big brother. Just say yes to that. Say yes to that, open your heart. Father, reveal yourself to us. If you want that, if you want an encounter for yourself, say yes, say God, give me an encounter. Give me an encounter with you. Right now, in my secret place, in my alone time with you, I say yes. I say yes. We say yes, God. We say yes, God. Have your way in our lives. Let us be the catalyst for our family, for our community, for our city, for this nation, God. Let us be the catalyst, God. go back to this place often. It's a reference point. I went back to that place in my secret place with God. And as we're separated, there's this big gap between where the Father is and where I was. I look behind me and I noticed I had wings. And as soon as I noticed I had wings, I shot up in the air and I landed at the Father's feet. There's no reason to be apart from him anymore. And then I was terrified. I truly felt scared. I'm at the feet of the creator of the universe. And all of that broke in an instant when I felt him just beckon me up into his lap. I got up in his lap. He pulled me to his chest. He kissed me on the cheek. And he said, call me daddy. (laughs) How many of you want to know him as daddy? The tender, perfect God, let us know you as dead. Your love is proud to be seen with me. So when I came out of that 
trance like state the first time. It was a Sunday morning. And I was late for church. And prophet Bob Jones from Morningstar was there speaking. The cars were lining the road. It was crazy. I got there and I felt like Holy Spirit said stay. Because I was going to just come back tonight to the night service. I get in there. And Bob Jones says, we used to talk about going to heaven like it's an encounter that happens at the end of your life. The very morning, the first time, I experienced heaven and saw the Father in Jesus. That morning at church, Bob Jones says, I'm here to tell you today, going to heaven is not just an event that happens at the end of your life. You can access heaven every single day. Right now, we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How many of you want to access more of the Father every day? How many of you understand that the closer we get to God, the more we become who He created us to be, the stronger the weapon our life is in His hands, and the more the kingdom of darkness will be destroyed. Things begin to happen after that encounter. When I prayed, I saw the first absolute miracle on the spot. Three, actually. My, my pastor, Bill Johnson, I love, he talks about having an awareness of Holy Spirit on your shoulder like a dove. The Bible says the dove descended on Jesus and stayed. Bill says to walk. What would it be like to walk? through life, acknowledging God's presence on our life like a dove. Everything we do, making sure it's in alignment, it's not going to fly off. Hosting the very presence of the creator of the universe. I prayed with a guy that was in his 60s. You can open your eyes, unless you're in a moment, if you're in a place with God, you're good. I prayed with a guy that was in his 60s, I think almost 70. His arm, he had tried to screw a light bulb in it and it tore all the muscles in his arm. And I was in a work setting. How many understand you are the church, wherever you go church is? I prayed for his arm, God totally healed his arm. We were rejoicing, we were thanking God. And then he said something about his hearing aids. He needed new hearing aids. I said, no, you just need to do eardrums. Papa can heal that too. He took his hearing aids out. He set them down. His wife, Sarah, said, Manuel, can you hear me? He said, oh, yeah. She walked 20 feet into the kitchen and said, Manuel, normal, normal voice, Manuel, can you hear me? He said, oh, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, you can give an amen to that. I said, well, we'll we're on a roll here. Is there anything else you need from God? His wife, Sarah, said, no, he's great. Manuel said, actually, my sciatic has been killing me. And I heard Holy Spirit. I don't understand. The key is hearing Holy Spirit speak to us. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my Father say. And I'm going to do it. I The power is insane. The Father is saying. I heard him say, have Sarah pray for him. So I said, Sarah, you lay your hands on him and pray for him. So Sarah started praying and she was going off. Well, Hispanic couple, they were, she was just going for it. And I was just saying, yes, God, yes. And God totally healed Manuel. He started bending up and down, no pain. Are you kidding me? What is going to happen when we as the church have an awareness of wherever we are? God is looking 
for opportunities to be the miracle through us and our obedience. How quickly will word spread of how good God is? How many of you want that? How many of you want more of God? You want miracles? You want to hear his voice clearer than ever before? Just stand up where you're at. If that's, where you want, if that's what you're wanting, if that's what you're asking for, I'm going to agree with you. We have a good, good papa. He loves his kids. And he wants to use us more than we even want to be used, if you can believe that. So put your hands out in front of you and just say yes to God. Father, we invite you to have your way in our life. I hear what you've done for David. And Lord knows I haven't been as bad as him. So God, I'm claiming some of your goodness. I'm claiming all of your goodness. Just ask him, say, God, I want all the good things that you have for me. I want encounters. I want fresh revelation. I want to hear your voice speak to me. I want to be led by you. And I want to be used by you to bring miracles to those around me. Just say yes. Father, we say yes and agree. Just say yes. God, we say yes. God, I know that what I've experienced is only a taste even of what you have for me and your kids. But God, we ask right now in unity, asking you to use us, God. Reveal yourself to us. God, I ask you to meet my brothers and sisters in their secret place. In their alone time, God, when they get into your presence, it's just them and you. God, that you would wreck them with your love. Wreck them with your love for them, God. Ignite them with a passion and a fire to see you move in the lives of those around them. In Jesus' name. Now, if you have a need in your body, if you need healing in your body, raise your hand. There's something you need in your body. Raise your hand. You've all been activated. You all just prayed and accepted it. So if you see somebody around you with their hand raised, I want you to go next to them right now. If you know God heals, if you believe that he heals, you see somebody with their hand raised. Now just, if it's something that you feel comfortable sharing, what it is, you don't have to go into great detail, but we need to be strategic about what we're asking God for. If you have your hand raised, you can just tell them it's your back, it's your leg, it's your eye, it's your neck. Just tell them whatever it is. Now, if they've told you what it is, we're going to pray right now and agree. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, the name that is greater than every name, we release peace and your healing power right now into our brother and sister that needs it. Right now, we claim the healing that is in the blood of Jesus. Healing is the children's bread. It is ours. So we claim that right now. We claim that right now. We claim it right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, if you had your hand raised and you noticeably know something's different with whatever you were praying for, raise your hand. If you had your hand raised and you know something's different, you can feel it. Whatever it is, I see that hand back there. I see that hand right there. If you had your hand raised, believing for a miracle, and you know that something's shifted, something's different, you can move more, you can, whatever it is, raise your hand. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see that hand back there. I see that hand back there. If it's not quite 100%, raise your hand again. If you still need, all right, we're gonna go after it again. Hey, even Jesus did it, right? He prayed twice. He prayed and put mud in the eyes and he saw his, the guy saw people as trees, then he prayed again and it was clear. So if you're with somebody that still has their hand raised, pray and believe right now for them. Father, we're thankful that this very morning you're activating people like you did Sarah and like you did me. It was a ripple effect that I'm never the same. I know miracles are real. I've seen them happen. 
Nobody can take that away from me. And God, you're doing it now. Nobody can take away someone's miracle. So we're thanking you right now for miracles. We're thanking you for miracles and for activating those around us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Complete healing right now in Jesus' name. If you got prayed for a second time and you feel something noticeably better than it was before, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I see that hand back there. I see that hand back there. I see those hands. Isn't God good, friends? God is so good, and he wants us to be his hands and feet. So when you know where I've come from and you see what God can do with a life that just says, says yes, my challenge to you is just live a life of yes. Know that God wants to use you more than you could even imagine. And that right now, this moment in history, the world needs that. Our country needs that. And our family needs that more than ever before. It's the only answer. I'm excited for the encounters that are going to happen with you guys in your secret place. I'm truly excited. God's wrecked me in ways that are just unbelievable. And it's only strengthened my resolve to go after him even more. So I'm excited for the encounters. Be expectant for God to show up in mighty ways in your life. And be courageous to pray with others to see miracles take place. Amen? 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 My family and my whole church family. God bless you guys. Thank you so much.